Hey friends, I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm excited to hit the road again with you and learn more about God's commandments. Remember, God's commandments aren't just rules that we have to follow all the time that make our lives more difficult. They're like street signs that show us the best way to go. We've been learning about God's commandments for a couple of weeks now, so we're gonna review the ones that we learned before today's lesson. First, we visited First Street, and that reminds us that we put God first. He comes above everything else in our lives. We put God first when we visited First Street. Last week, we visited Real God Road, and that reminded us that there is only one real God. The world teaches that there are many gods and many different ways to get to heaven, but the Bible teaches there's only one real God. Well, this week, we're visiting Name Lane. And Name Lane can remind us that we need to treat God's name with respect. Do any of you guys have a fun nickname? I never really had very many nicknames when I was growing up, but some people have some fun nicknames. And if I had you in the classroom, I'd have you share your nickname with me. But what we are called matters, doesn't it? And the way people use our name matters. And that's true for God too. So today we're going to hit the road, go to Name Lane, and learn about how we can respect God's name. The commandment that we're learning about today can be found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. And this is what it says. You must not use the name of the Lord your God thoughtlessly. The Lord will punish anyone who is guilty and misuses his name. Wow, that sounds pretty serious, doesn't it, you guys? The Lord will punish anyone who misuses his name. So God's name has power, and so we need to show respect for God's name when we talk. When we're saying who he is, that's okay. When we're praying to him, that's a good way to use his name. But when we misuse his name, like saying it as a curse word or a statement of surprise, that is not um, respectful for God's name. Imagine that your name was Sadie and you tripped and fell. And from then on, everybody said, whenever somebody fell, oh, she just pulled a Sadie. Man, that's not how you would want your name to be used, is it? You don't want somebody to think about somebody falling down and hurting themselves and having an accident every time your name is used. That's the same thing when we use God's name like a curse because God is holy and he is special. So we need to treat his name like it is special instead of using it in a negative way. So in order to understand why God's name is so special, we're gonna look at some of the different names that God is given in the Bible, and we're gonna explore those today so we can understand how special God's name is. So the first name that we're going to look at is I Am. And this is what it says about that name in the Bible. This is from Exodus 3, 13 and 14. Moses said to God, when I go to the Israelites, I will say to them, the God of your ancestors sent me to you. What if the people say, what is his name? What should I tell them? Then God said to Moses, I am who I am. That's where we get this one. I am who I am. So when you go to the people of Israel, tell them, I am has sent me to you. Well, that's kind of confusing. What does it mean that God's name is I am? Let's think about that. So I have this, um, this pencil here, okay? I really want this pencil to just be right up here by me, but I don't want to hold it. So I think I'm just going to set it here, and then hopefully it'll just stay. Oh no, you guys, it didn't stay. It fell to the ground. Hold on, I'm gonna have to pick that up. It broke too. Let's try it again. Okay, pencil, I want you to stay right here. Ready? Why doesn't my pencil wanna stay? Because there's nothing holding it up. There's nothing helping it to be right there. There's nothing helping it exist up here in the air. Hmm. So stay with me here. What kinds of things help you exist, help you to be alive? You need food, you need water, you need rest, you need love, 
These are all things that you need to exist. But when God says his name is I am, guess what that means? He doesn't need anything to exist. He just is. Just like that pencil that wouldn't stay up in the air because it didn't have anything holding it up and helping it exist up here. We can't exist without those things that we talked about, but God can. Man, he is so special. He doesn't need any of that stuff to exist. And that's why he said his name is I am. He doesn't depend on anything. He just is. Isn't that amazing? If he was just wanted to float in the air, he could. He doesn't need anything to hold him up. Like if I were to sit down right now, I would hit the floor because there would be nothing to hold me up. I would have to sit in a chair if I wanted to sit down. But God doesn't need anything to exist. He just is. He is so cool. Okay, we're going to look at another name now. This name is Lord of Lords. And before we talk about what that means, we're going to play a little game. Okay, are you ready? So wherever you're at right now, we're gonna play a little game of would you rather, okay? So I'm gonna give you two things and I'm gonna point. If you would rather, and I'll say the first one, then you go that way. If you would rather, and I'll say the second one, and you go that way. So wherever you're at right now, whatever room in your house, unless you're sitting in your car and you can't run, then you just play in your mind. But wherever you're at, I'm gonna point and I want you to run to whichever one you would rather do. Okay, you ready? Would you rather break your leg, run that way, or win a million dollars, run that way? I think most of you are over here voting for a million dollars. That would be my guess. Okay, here's the next one. Would you rather, so you can come back to the middle. Would you rather have your house burn down or win a million dollars? Nobody wanted their house to burn down. You guys are so smart. You all wanted to win a million dollars, I'm quite sure. Okay, let's do one more. Would you rather eat a brownie mm, or win a million dollars? You all wanted to win a million dollars again? Man, you guys didn't have any difficulty. Even when it came to a brownie, which is really yummy, you still knew that you wanted to pick a million dollars. How did you know that? Because you know that even when there's a good option, a million dollars is better. And guess what? That's what this name means. He is the Lord of the Lords. So of everybody who's somebody who's important or cool or famous or powerful, God is still better. He is the million dollars of all the people. He is the Lord of Lords. And this is what the Bible says about it. This is... Deuteronomy 10, 17, the Lord your God is God of all gods. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the great God. Man, I love those words. Those are powerful. I'm gonna read them again. The Lord your God is the God of all gods. He is the Lord of all lords. He is the great God. He is strong and wonderful. He does not take sides and he will not be talked into doing evil. That's Deuteronomy 10, 17. That is a fantastic verse, you guys. This is why we treat God's name special because he's not just a celebrity. He's not just somebody who has a lot of money or a famous person or even someone powerful or really important. He is above everybody else. So when we use his name, we need to use it with respect and we need to treat it special because he is the Lord of Lords. He is not just like anybody else. That's why what we're learning about here on Name Lane, that we have to treat God's name with respect because he is special. All right, so let's see. I think I have two more names for us. This is the next one. God is the Alpha and the Omega. Well, what in the world does that mean? Well, the Bible was written, I don't know if you knew this or not, the Bible was written in a different language when it was first written. And Alpha and Omega are two letters of the alphabet from the language the Bible was written in. And Alpha happens to be the first letter and Omega happens to be the last letter. So how does that tell us something about God? 
Well, let's look at a little picture here to see if it can help us understand. So here is our alphabet. I put it on this plate, okay? So imagine if you didn't know your alphabet, like um, some of your, maybe your baby siblings, if you have them, they don't know their alphabet yet. Or if you're learning another language, you don't know their alphabet. Did you know that there are different languages that have all different alphabets? It's true. These are the letters that we use in English to spell our words. And once you learn them, you know that it starts with A and it ends with Z, right? Well, the alphabet from the Bible that the language it was written in started with alpha and ended with omega. But if you didn't know that, can you see how it just goes on and on? How do we know where it begins and where it ends? So when we say that God is the alpha and the omega, we say that he is the beginning and he is the end because what was here before the earth and before everything else was created? Just God. He was here in the beginning, you guys. That's so special. He doesn't need anything to exist. No one created him. Nothing created God. He just is. And that's what we, why we learned his name is I am. But it also makes him the alpha, the beginning, that everything else comes from. And you know what I love even better is that he's the omega. He's the end. Because you guys, in life that we're living right now, we don't always know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. My daughter Sophie asks me this all the time. Well, what do we do next? Well, what are we doing tomorrow? Well, what are we doing the next day? And we want to know that, don't we? We, we want to know what's coming next, what's going to be the end. How is this all going to end someday? Um, what will the end be? We want to know. And God says, guess what, guys? I am the end. You don't have to worry about the end. You don't have to worry about tomorrow. You don't have to worry about anything because I'm already there. I am the alpha. I am the omega. I was there at the beginning and I'm going to be there at the end to welcome you home. That is such a fantastic name of God, the alpha and the omega. Um, and this is what it says in Revelation 1.8. The Lord God says, I am the alpha and the omega. I am the one who is and was and is coming. I am the all-powerful. Wow, that is so awesome. We have one more name to look at. God is holy. What does it mean to be holy? All these fancy church words we're learning today. What does it mean to be holy? This is what the Bible says in Psalm 22, verse 3. You sit as the Holy One. The praises of Israel are your throne. So what does it mean to be holy? Let's think about that for a minute. I brought something else with me today to help you understand what holy is. It's a toothbrush. Do you have a toothbrush? Yeah, we all have a toothbrush. Hopefully you use it at least twice a day. Keep your teeth clean, okay? You only get one set. Um, but what if your toothbrush touched something really yucky? Oh no. Like what if your dog licked it? Ew, gross. What if your brother or sister rubbed it on their toes? Oh no, ooh, I wouldn't want to put that in my mouth. Or the worst one yet, what if it falls in the toilet? Ew, gross. You wouldn't want to use your toothbrush if any of those things happened to you because your toothbrush is set apart for a special purpose. And that's kind of what the word holy means. Another way to describe holy is to say set apart. So your toothbrush is set apart just for your teeth and only your teeth. You don't even share your toothbrush, at least I hope you don't. You don't use your brother's toothbrush, you know, your sister doesn't use your toothbrush. No, your toothbrush is set apart just for you. And that's the only purpose. And we wanna keep it nice that way because otherwise it's yucky. But the same thing is true when we say, when we talk about God being holy, he's really special. And we wouldn't want to use his name for anything other than to say how special he is. Because that would be like rubbing your toothbrush on your toes. Ew, gross. I don't think any of you would want to use your toothbrush after that. And so when we don't respect God's name, that's kind of what we're doing. We're kind of putting our toothbrush on our toes or putting it in the toilet. We don't want to do that. We want to keep God's name holy. So now let's talk about what it means to, uh, when we use God's name in a way that is not respectful. 
So I want you to say this phrase with me at home, okay? And I want you to say it just like I'm saying it, okay? Are you ready? I am so excited to go to the amusement park. Let's try that again. I am so excited to go to the amusement park. Now, wait a minute. Did my face and the sound of my voice match the words that I was saying or not? No. That's not how you would say that sentence. You would say, I am so excited to go to the amusement park, right? Exactly. So that's kind of what it's like when we use God's name in a way that we shouldn't use it. We're it doesn't even make sense to use God's name as a curse. We just learned how wonderful and special God is, that he is the I am, that he is the Lord of Lords, that he is the Alpha and the Omega, and that he is holy. And there are many other names for God in the Bible, but we learned all those wonderful things about God. And so if we say his name in a way that isn't matching his wonderful character, just like what I said about the amusement park, then we're not treating his name with respect and it doesn't make any sense. You guys, God is wonderful and he loves you and he deserves your respect when you use his name. So I wanna make sure that you understand we shouldn't use God's name as a curse and we shouldn't use it just when we're surprised or excited about something. Um, we shouldn't ever use God's name as a curse. That's not showing respect to his name. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a stroll with me down name lane and learning the different names of God. Remember, we learned today that we need to use respect when we use God's name. And we learned all about the reasons why, because God is so special and wonderful. So up next, I hope you enjoy this video called His Name. I'll see you guys next week. What a big, amazing universe God has given us. The one true God who made all of this goes by many names. Lord. Yahweh. Jehovah. King of Kings. Different parts of our world speak different languages and have different landscape and different looking people. But God created everything and loves us all the same. Let's see some of the amazing parts of the world that God created. Can you guess where in the world this is? This is Thailand. Let's hear how you say Lord in Thai. Tao. Did you get that? Let's hear it again. Tao. Now you try. Whoa. Look how awesome this country is! Where do you think we are now? This is Japan. Let's hear how you say God in Japanese. Kamisama. Let's hear that again. Kamisama. Now you try. All right, we're heading to a new country. Any guesses where we are now? This is Mexico. Let's hear how you say King of Kings in Spanish. Rey de Reyes. One more time. Rey de Reyes. Okay, now you say it. Where do you think this awesome country is? This is Kenya. Let's hear how you say Jehovah in Swahili. Jehovah. Wow, let's hear that again. Jehovah. Okay, now you say it. It's so amazing to think how many Christians, separated by oceans and thousands of miles, are worshiping the one true God. Whether you speak English, Swahili, Spanish, Japanese or Thai? God's name is holy and special. We use God's name to praise him and talk about him. We don't use it disrespectfully. 
We respect God's name in all languages.